It's Wild Man Rouse here, and this month, and the Wild Art Tog for the Year competition, which I'm a very proud judge and proud to tell you all about, it's the silhouettes category, which is my category. So I want to show you some of my favorite silhouettes of all time. In fact, the top 10, like it says there on the bottom, uh, to inspire you to enter, because if you're not in it, you can't win it. And you notice as well, I've got my West Ham hat on today. I'm a very proud hammer, as you know. Last night, we won 2-0 at the Olympic Stadium against Seville to progress to the uh, quarterfinals of the Europa Cup. Big, big moment in our history. And a special shout out as well uh, to Andrei Yarmolenko, our Ukrainian forward who scored the winning goal last night, who's showing amazing, amazing bravery um, and is just an iconic player for us. Anyway, so what I wanted to do was show you some silhouettes to really, really inspire you because I want you all to enter. Remember, it's not about what you think about your picture. It's about what we think. Don't judge it. Put your pictures in and let us judge them okay don't forget a, a portion of the uh, proceeds go to good causes as well so it's a good competition all right so there's a dodgy silhouette of me we're standing there forever that was in chile actually quite a beautiful morning that um i must remind me to process the pictures <laughs> um all right let's start off number 10 see you can tell it's number 10 because look at no expense spared graphics there number 10 in the corner just helps you out derek the hair Silhouettes, right, have to have an absence of light, okay? In other words, an absence of detail. We're looking at shape and form. We're looking at wildlife in its purest sense, okay? So it doesn't matter what it's got on its fur, what it's got on its feathers and everything else. It looks its best in silhouette, which, yes, that's, thank you very much. That's exactly what I do as well. I'm always best photographed in silhouette, although not from the side with a ski jump nose. Um, so silhouettes, as I say, they do convey a, a sense of feeling and atmosphere. It's amazing to be able to take them. Um, a lot of photographers don't take them because you think as soon as the sun goes down, you pack up and go home. Well, that's when silhouettes actually start or obviously before the sun rises, but that's harder to get up in the morning, I know, especially when you're getting older. The duvet seems very warm compared to taking a silhouette. But if you stay out after sunset, it's often the best time. There's a few rules um, about uh, taking silhouettes. One, no detail on the subject. Two, you've got to be able to see through the legs. Now, Derek here just about squeezes through with the rule about seeing through the legs. Otherwise, if, if he was slightly lower, it would just be a shape without legs. So I'd rather he'd sat higher. I couldn't crawl any higher when I was crawling on the ground. Um, so it's the best I could do. But I really like this for Derek. Uh, and Derek had to feature. You can tell, see it's taken with the 1x, 100 to 400. Uh, high ISO, and you might wonder, well, why are you shooting high ISO that time in the morning? Well, one, I want to get the shutter speed, and two, I know that Derek is going to leg it. And if he's going to leg it, he might leg it across the sunset, and I might get uh, a sunrise, sorry, and I might get a good picture, but I won't do that if I'm at ISO 100. So I try to boost my ISOs up quite a lot, uh, so they always keep the shutter speed high, especially when I'm crawling and hand-holding as well. So there's a nice silhouette uh, with Derek there here. Number nine... Uh, Barnacle Geese, this is taken on Isla, and uh, I resisted all temptations to go to the Isla Whiskey Distillery. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. I had a very nice lock-in at the Isla Whiskey Distillery, which was very good. And when I recovered the next day, I managed to go out and get some geese pictures. Now, these ones, they look like they're taken uh, next to an active volcano. It's not, it's just Isla with some clouds around one of the peaks. They were flying across. Um, it, it's not the most fantastically award-winning picture in the world. Fantastically, is that a word? Probably. Uh, but it does show that silhouettes can work close up or they can work in the sense of the environment as well. So you can take beautiful silhouettes of a, of a group, a flock of birds against the sky or even a single bird. You know, it's the fact that it's without detail and we're just looking at shape and form. And I like the chaos there with some wings up, some wings down, some wings level. I think it's really good. When you see an image where all the wings are up, you kind of get a bit suspicious because birds don't fly like that. Um, so I like this, it's nice and wide angle. It's taken a long time ago on the 1D2, 500 mil. Uh, ISO 800, 63, 500 of a second. When you're doing silhouettes, you've got to keep your shutter speeds up high, all right? There's no point taking them and getting a load of wobble. He said, we don't like a load of wobble. Um, so you don't want a load of wobble, so keep your shutter speed up as high as you can to get your images wobble free. As I said, this is gonna be a quick uh, one for you because I know you've only given me 10 minutes of your life. Famous picture of mine, uh, lioness, fire, the only fire-breathing lioness in the world. Uh, she obviously had something against that weed there. <laughs> um, caught backlit, okay. This kind of isn't really a silhouette because the sun is, was up in the morning, but I, I love it so much. And because there's an absence of detail on the line, it kind of qualifies. It's also Bradford Curry, Ring of Fire, um, and backlit as well. But I thought I would put this um, in this category because I love it so much. Um, it was my conscious choice to choose this. I could have shot it from the front or shot it from the back. 
Um, and I decided to shoot it into the light because she had a big scar on one side and some blood where she'd been eating um, and it wouldn't have looked the best. And also she wouldn't have been isolated from the background. So I went round, shot it into the light, darkened it off, three stops you can see there. Uh, nice high ISO, gives me a nice high shutter speed. Why am I doing that? Because I want to stop the motion and I expect her to run and chase something at any minute. So I always want to be prepared. I've given this image lots of nice space in which to breathe, her to breathe into, and I absolutely love it. Yes, it was a cold morning, and yes, I was wearing my West Ham, got to get that reference in there, at, at the same time. So that's number eight, Fire Breathing Lion. Okay, this is a magpie goose. It was taken on the Bamaroo Wetlands on an airboat in Australia, in the Northwest Territories. And I was there doing a wildlife story for uh, Northern Australia uh, to talk about, and Western Australia, talking about uh, the wildlife that you can find there for tourism. So we went out uh, well, well before dawn. The most mosquitoes I've ever had in my life surrounding me. I had a mosquito suit on. And we watched, we, this, this bird was roosting on the tree and we knew it wasn't gonna go anywhere because it was roosting there, that's what it wanted to do. And we just waited for the full moon to drop enough I got far enough back, I used the maximum zoom of the lens there, which was a 200 to 400 Nikon, um, to make the moon as big as I could in the frame. Obviously, I've cropped it slightly to make it appear slightly bigger. Minus one stop to take away all of the light. Remember, we don't want any detail. It also helps you when you're, when you're using the moon or the sun, obviously, you want to take down the exposure, because especially with the moon, you want to retain detail. And with the sun, you want to reduce the flaring around the edges. And please be very careful if you're pointing a long lens into the sun, I don't recommend it. Uh, I used a high aperture there of f20, because I wanted uh, to get some of the moon in focus. And a lot of these shots are done with the moon dropped in behind afterwards. I don't do that, it's not my thing. Uh, so I went to an awful lot of pain, but getting bitten to pieces by the mosquitoes and lining up the airboat. You know, you line it up, and then the moon has gone down that much, so you've got to lean back. Uh, but I just wanted to get that really nice frame there uh, and silhouette and show. It's a very odd bird as well, so this kind of silhouette shows it in a really nice light. Sorry, magpie goose. I get, I'll get friends of the magpie goose now writing to me with t-shirts and that, like slating me and trolling me on, on social media. So apologies for that bit not the best looking bird in the world. Right, number six, cheetah uh, on a mound, you can see there, and the cheetah is watching the eco-tourists in the balloon, and all those people in the balloon, and if you think ballooning in the in, in the Maasai Mara is a lovely uh, experience where you'll be alone with the wildlife, you won't be, you're with 30 odd other people, all paying $500 to somebody who's making a lot of money out of you flying in a balloon. Sorry, balloon operators, I'll get trolled by you as well. Um, but I kind of like this, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of an inverse wildlife picture because the wild, the people in the balloon are seeing not a lot and the cheetah is watching the balloon go up. And I had to wait for the balloon to come up and time it so it was in the gap there. Otherwise it would have been in the grasses and it would look really weird. Um, I made the decision again to shoot front lit or back lit. Back lit I thought was a really beautiful image with the cheetah on the mound of the sky. Um, 1DX, 200, 400, 1600 as usual because I want to keep the shutter speed up. Uh, you're in a vehicle with other people who are also excited so you're bouncing around a bit. And also there might be a tiny bit of movement because as soon as cheetah leaves a mound, they generally run a little bit to stretch. So you want to be able to get that. Minus two stops just to darken the whole exposure down to take all the light out to increase the saturation of the color and also give me some shutter speed to work with. Of course, these days I would, with the, uh, uh, with the OM-1, I would be shooting at a much higher ISO than that, probably 6400, so I could get some kind of shutter speed just in case it ran to be able to freeze it. So nice space there, you know, it's the composition. Composition is all important on silhouettes. So I've got a nice leading composition into the corner there. Okay, number five now. Um, again, a cheetah, very different. This is taken with a tungsten white balance. And I'll often do this to try and give a twilight feel to the sky. If the sky is pretty bland, and it's, it's orange, but it's bland, I don't really like it. So I shot it with a tungsten white balance to give it something different. I shot it through the grass, so you've got to manually focus and use your peaking uh, to get the focus right, because the autofocus, of course, doesn't know what you want to do because the Vulcan mind meld has failed. Um, so, uh, so I shot through the grass with the manual focus uh, there, 200, 400, 644, 5, all the numbers are the same. Minus one again, uh, I'm on minus a lot with silhouettes to darken it off. And you can see there's a little baby on the left hand side watching mama uh, hunt as well. And I gave that a lot of space because I just like the feeling of looking through the grass at a prey eye view which is what I wanted to take there. And silhouettes can convey that, because if that wasn't in silhouette, you would be looking at all the grasses and everything else, and all the detail would be distracted by the little cheetah. I don't want that. I just want the pure shape of everything involved. And as I said, keep it as pure as I can. Down to number four, this is the famous arrowhead tiger. And this was created, and what do I mean by that? Well, this wasn't after sunset. The sun was up, I saw the picture, the potential. The light was horrendous. 
if I said to everyone, right, minus three stops, make the exposure as dark as you can, um, and let's see what we can get. So it's nicely framed there. Again, I said earlier on, composition, very important. Nicely framed in the top corners and with the black below. Um, I think the, the blacksmith plover there is the most bravest blacksmith plover in the world because it just sat there, it refused to leave. It must have had a nest there. It was squawking at the tiger all the time. The tiger just ignores these kind of things. But I think it's a nice picture. Composition, leg forward, of course, gives positive composition. The frames have got stuff in the corners. It works really, really well. Um, and it does show that you can create silhouettes in the daylight as well. You don't need to have sunset or sunrise. You can create them in the daylight to create an interesting effect. And I always try to create something out of nothing. All right, taken last October, our first big trip since COVID lockdown uh, to the Mara, where we took uh, some fantastic clients out to have a really cool time. We had a very nice time with Lions. This one, I absolutely love it. It's 99% there. I wish that, luckily, I can see the nose. If it had been turned around a little bit more, it would have been perfect. We could have moved, of course, um, and the line just, I was sitting there all the time saying, do it, do it, do it, and it just didn't. This shows you uh, kind of one of the issues that you have with uh, photographing silhouettes with autofocus is that the autofocus is not overly keen um, on the black of the silhouette focusing on it. So uh, you have a grid and I have normally a three by three or four by four grid and I put it half over the line and half over the background and it will pick up the edge of the line because it's the area of greatest contrast and snap straight into the focus. Um, composition here has lots of space. There's no point cropping it any other way. I wanted to show the cloud formation. It's not really a lion portrait. It's about the environment that it lives in. I tried to shoot it wider, but the clouds above were just dark and black, and it just didn't look right. So uh, 150 to 400, I said 200 f11, 2000 of a second, minus two stops, two stops to darken it down again. And the 2000th of a second, well, that was partly because of the darkening down, etc., etc. It was really, really bright. Uh, and at least I've got a little bit of light to do something with. So that's my third favorite. Now, what's my second? Another tiger, and as well, Arrowhead. From the early days of Arrowhead, actually, when she was uh, a lot younger. Actually, I look at this, and I wonder if it is Arrowhead. I wonder if it's not Krishna. But anyway, uh, Dickie will tell me. Um, it was amazing, though. She walks along the edge of the lake. It's fantastic. And Dickie and I are parked next to each other, as we always do. Clients in the back. And I sent her from, get your wide angles on. And could Dickie and I find ours? They were underneath the seat. It was in the days before I had three cameras going. I only had two. So the wide angle was rolling under the seat. I could see Dickie fighting to find his as well. We couldn't get it. So I shot it with a 70 to 200 to eight, minus two stops to darken everything off. And it came out really, really nicely. A wonderful lady next to me who's sadly deceased, but she was she was amazing and such a great supporter around the ball said, Andy, did you get the four? And I was like, what do you mean? And she showed me her iPhone pitch, which to this day, eclipses this beyond belief it was tiger sunset four sky oh my god fantastic and ever since that day i've always made sure that i have enough cameras to shoot so i have a wide angle camera i have a medium camera and i have a long lens camera and i have everything all loaded and ready to go okay because i don't want to miss a shot again but this is a pretty nice shot um, again autofocus you've got to get the edge there's no point trying to focus on the tiger with the dot it's not going to work so you've got to give the autofocus a chance to work so a three by three grid works really nicely all right, so what's my favorite picture? What's my favorite silhouette of all time? Well, it'll change because, <laughs> but right now, this is my favorite of all time, which is the light from heaven, uh, which did really well in, I think it won the African wildlife category in the Nature's Best, US Wildlife Talk for the Year competition. I love entering Nature's Best. Um, and it just shows that silhouettes can do really, really well in, in competition. And look at the kit there. So D3S, but 28 to 300. You don't need these amazing, like high price prime lenses to take really great silhouettes. This was taken with, you know, what most people call, call a kit lens. And I used it for so much work because I found it was so sharp and so quick. This sunset came first. We hunted, it was amazing. And we hunted around the Mara <laughs> where we were looking for something to photograph. And eventually the baby giraffe sat up, boom, there you go. And it just shows that with silhouettes, you know, if you include the habitat and you include the landscape, you take something really evocative. This ad adheres to the rules. You can see through the legs. It's simple, space, dynamic, boom, it works really well. So that's my favorite silhouette, but it will probably change as I start to shoot a lot more. So Silhouettes is open now and closes the 31st of March. The website is wildartpotty.com or social at wildartpotty. So you can have a look. As I said, 
Do not judge the picture yourself. Allow us to judge it, okay? If it if you if you like it and you think it's good, then get it in there because you've got an equal chance to everyone else. You've got more of a chance if you're a West Ham fan and even more of a chance if you've got a season ticket to West Ham that you actually want to give me. You're going to do quite well in the competition if you do that. But I do also uh, accept chocolate um, and other uh, bribery elements as well. <laughs> Don't tell the competition organisers. That's just between me, you and the few thousand people watching this. But anyway, so please uh, upload your silhouettes. Remember... Remember the, the key rule to entering competitions. Don't think that yours is the only picture I'm going to see when I judge. I'm going to see a few thousand pictures and I'm going to go boom, 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 boom with the arrow key up. I'll make that kind of noise while I do it. And I need a picture that's going to stop me and go, yeah, I want to keep that and look at it later on. So have a look. Be honest with your pictures, okay? Um, so be honest and just look at them and think, yeah, okay, I like that. That picture's got something. It could be something that your that your colleagues, your friends, your loved ones that they really like and they see something else in it. It's often best to show somebody else your, your pictures and let them pick a favourite out because you're, of course, all biased. So have a look. Silhouettes, there we are, wildartpotty.com. Give it a go. Um, also, my website, we've got the OM1 training right now. So we've got public training at the end of the month. Um, I've done a lot of work on the Olympus OM1. I know a lot about it. We gave our first training session the other night on how to use the Autofocus Pro Capture and stuff. You can sign up for that on my website. I also got the Flex Shooter store open right now. So we're selling the best tripod heads ever made. Uh, 600 grams really can support anything from an 800 down to wide angle. And I've got workshops and expeditions. We're putting increasing numbers on the web. Uh, we've got Tigers open now and Galapagos. Uh, so please have a look at that. You can see andyrouse.co.uk or there's my social if you want to follow us. That's all great, right? But the most important message I want to give you today um, is that the Disasters Emergency Committee appeal is running now for Ukraine. And I know that we all feel powerless and helpless and whatever your political views, we all feel the same. Uh, so if you want to contribute something, and I know that thousands of you and thousands of you have already, me included, so thank you very much from everybody, but if you want to contribute, deck.org.uk and look for the Ukraine appeal. They use the money and distribute it. It's the Government Disasters Emergency Committee. So they give it to the Red Cross and others to do good work uh, there uh, in Ukraine. So uh, we support the people of Ukraine and please have a look. So I've enjoyed, I hope that you've enjoyed this quick chat, probably took a little bit more than 15 minutes on silhouettes and that you feel inspired. And I will be back soon with some more stuff. See you later. Bye. Bye.